Hello, my name is David Bohr and I'm an Apple Professional Development Consultant. In this video we're going to look at learning language with the iPad and we're going to look at an author called Michael Merpurgo. To do this we're going to use the iTunes U app. I click on the iTunes U app here and I click on catalog and I have now going to do uh, I'm now going to do a search on Michael Merpurgo to find what resources are available. And there are some resources from the National Theatre based on his book called War Horse and the play created by the National Theatre. So I'm going to download a short documentary video here and I'm going to download the first chapter of the book here. So they download into the iTunes U app. But there are also some files here. There's a pamphlet. So if I click on Get File, it opens up in the Safari browser and as it launches in the Safari browser, I, there is an icon at the top right called Open in iBooks. So I open it in iBooks and I have the resources downloaded to my iPad and I can look at it in iBooks. There is actually a full scheme of work available here. So let's go back to iTunes U and have a look at the other files we've downloaded. So I click on Cancel for the search and then go back to my library and you can see here at the top left there is a National Theatre. Uh, course and if I click on the short documentary it plays he's quite a horse Albert and then if I now. click on the first chapter of the book we're here Michael Malpurgo reading the book and dark damp stables and rats that scampered along the beams above my head but I remember well enough the day of the horse sale, the terror so the of the next thing we're going to do is go to iBooks, and uh, in iBooks, what I want to do is go back to the library, and now go to the store. Okay, so in the store, I've done a search for Michael Morpogo again, and there is uh, a book there called War Horse, which we're going to have a look at. This is an EPUB book and we can buy it or get a sample. The sample gives us the first chapter of the book and it downloads and we can open the book and look at it. So iBooks is a great tool for reading books. If you're using the accessibility features enabled on your iPad, you can get it to read certain sections of the book to you. My earliest memories are a confusion of hilly fields and dark, damp stables, and rats that scampered along the beams above my head. You can also ask uh, iBooks to define certain words, for example, haggling. So I've selected it, and I click on define, and it gives me a dictionary definition, which is again very useful. The other thing I'd also like to do is uh, write some notes in my book. And what I can do is select some text uh, that I want to write a note about. And I choose a note. And I can write a note about this piece of text for future reference and for emailing to anyone else that I want. Now that my students have got some background to the book, I'm going to ask them to re-look at a passage and create a narrative for it, because this book is actually written in the first person. So we're going to use a storyboarding tool, it's actually a mind mapping tool, called Poplet. I double click in Poplet to create a new popple, and there what I can do is write some text. And uh, they're going to storyboard first. So the first part of the first scene is the auction and they're going to add a picture from the library that they've downloaded from the internet. And we choose a picture to put in there. Click on Done. And then we can create some more popples, little different parts of the first uh, chapter of the book. So we're going to create another one in here, another box, and eventually we have three separate uh, parts to the book. The next thing I'm going to do is ask my students to start writing a script because I'm going to ask them to create a video representation of this first chapter. So here they start writing in uh, their script and uh, I'm going to fast forward a bit here till we finish that. And what I want to do now is export this as an image. So I click on the export button and I export that as a, a, a JPEG. That then goes off and is can then be found in my photo library, and here it is in my photo library. 
So the next thing I want to do is open iMovie. So I'll uh, go to iMovie and I create a new project in iMovie. And uh, what I want to do is import the images. So I click on the camera icon and I can now get my images in to my project by just choosing them from my camera roll. And I'll get a third one in here. And if I double click on uh, one of those images, I can add a title. So I'm going to choose an opening title and I can write my title in the box provided. The next thing I want to think about is uh, creating a narration. So I click on the microphone button and I can record my narration into my project. So here I am talking about these uh, different uh, parts of the project and uh, there you can see the recording in. I can record a piece of audio for each part of the image and rearrange things as necessary. So when I've finished, I can then go back to my project, click on my projects. So back in my projects, my students have some great options for sharing their projects with all sorts of other people.